So I must confess, I am a huge fan of pasta. Like seriously, I eat it all the time. And I'll tell you why. Because it's such a versatile ingredient and using pasta, you can easily create an amazing dish. Anyways, with that being said today, I'm going to show you how to make one of my personal all-time favorite pasta dishes. We're talking a one pan creamy tuna pasta. Now the beauty of this recipe is that it's made with the most basic pantry staples. Like seriously, I'm pretty sure as you're watching this video, you're going to have all these ingredients at home, folks. This is what great food is all about. Recipes that are very easy to make come together in just 30 minutes and pack a ton of great flavors. Let's begin by grabbing a large fry pan. Very important to use a larger pan here. This is a one pan pasta. That way all the ingredients in the liquid fit in there. I'm going to heat it with a medium heat and add in about two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, which is 30 milliliters. Now to make this recipe, I'm using an olive oil from Apollo. This is their Miller's favorite organic extra virgin olive oil. It has such an incredible depth of flavors and it works perfect with this pasta dish. Link where you can get some in the description box below. While the olive oil is heating, I'm going to thinly slice two shallots. Now when I'm working with shallots, it's exactly like onions. I like to remove one of the outer layers, as those outer layers are not as firm as the inside ones, making it so much easier to slice the shallots. And we'll grab four cloves of garlic, remove the skins, and roughly chop them. Then we'll add in our sliced shallots and our chopped garlic into the pan with the hot olive oil. And we'll mix the ingredients around. That way they're all coated in that olive oil. And I always like to mix this continuously. That way the garlic and the shallots don't brown too quickly and they all evenly saute. After about two minutes and the shallots and garlic are lightly sauteed, you don't want to brown them too much. I'm going to add in half a teaspoon of sweet smoked Spanish paprika, which is 1.15 grams. And we'll give it a quick mix. That way the paprika is evenly coating the shallots and garlic. Now typically when I'm making a pasta dish, I like to add in one teaspoon of paprika. For this recipe, I'm only going to add in half a teaspoon. That way it doesn't overpower the pasta dish, but it still gives it a beautiful smoky flavor. Then I'm going to add in a 14 and a half ounce can of diced tomatoes, which is 400 grams. And we'll season everything with sea salt and freshly cracked black pepper. And we'll give this a quick mix. That way everything's evenly mixed together. Then we'll turn up the heat from a medium heat to a high heat. And we're going to simmer this for a couple minutes. That way the juices from the canned tomato sauce can slightly thicken up and for all the flavors to develop. After about three minutes and the mixture has slightly thickened up, I'm going to add in two cups of vegetable broth, which is 475 milliliters. As always, I'm using homemade broth. You'll find the recipe on how to make it in the iCard above and description box below. And we'll give this a mix and bring that broth to a boil. Now to make this recipe, you don't have to use vegetable broth. You can totally use water instead. I used to prefer to use the broth as it gives this pasta dish a bigger depth of flavors. Once the broth comes to a boil, it's time to add in the pasta. I'm going to be using penne pasta here, but you can use whatever thick cup pasta you like. I'm going to measure out two cups, which is 200 grams. And add the pasta into the boiling broth. And we'll give this a mix. That way all the pasta noodles are evenly distributed and they're all covered in that broth. And you don't have to mix this continuously, but do get in there every one to two minutes. That way the noodles don't stick together and they all evenly cook. After about nine minutes, and you can see the majority of that broth has been absorbed by the pasta, but there's still plenty of broth left. I'm going to place a lid on the pan and we'll lower the fire to a low medium heat. And I'm going to simmer this between three to four minutes. That way I end up with perfectly cooked al dente pasta. The noodles that I'm using take 12 to 13 minutes to get them al dente. So that was nine minutes without the lid and then three to four minutes with the lid. So it's very important that you check the package instructions in your pasta. That way you don't overcook your noodles. After about four minutes, I'm going to turn off the heat and remove the lid from the pan. And we're going to leave our pasta to sit here for a couple minutes. That way it can slightly cool off. In the meantime, let's get the rest of the ingredients ready. I'm going to grab two cans of tuna in olive oil and drain them into a sieve with a bowl underneath. The size of each can is 90 grams, which is about 3.25 ounces. 
and we'll move the tuna around to remove any of the excess oil, but you don't want to overmix it, otherwise it's going to dry up. And for this recipe, we're not going to be using the olive oil from the tuna, but by all means do not toss it. Pour this over a salad for an incredible dressing. And I'm also going to grab a handful of fresh parsley and finely chop it. After leaving the pasta to cool off for a couple minutes, I'm going to add in the drained tuna, one container of Greek yogurt, which is half a cup or 125 grams. Very important for the Greek yogurt to be at room temperature, otherwise it can easily curdle. We'll season the yogurt generously with freshly cracked black pepper. The black pepper brings out an incredible flavor in Greek yogurt. And we'll add in about two tablespoons of the finely chopped parsley, which is eight grams. And we'll gently mix this together until everything's well mixed. And check it out, our one pan creamy tuna pasta is done. So easy to make, made with the most basic pantry staples and done in just 30 minutes. But the beauty of this dish is that it's a one pan pasta dish, meaning all the starch in the noodle stays in the dish, giving it the most incredible textures and flavors. Let's give this a try and see how it tastes. All right, folks, time for the moment of truth. Let's see how this pasta dish turned out. Big bite, here we go. I think I'm just gonna say it. This is possibly my favorite pasta dish out there because it's got so many great flavors and that creamy texture with the Greek yogurt takes it to the next level. You saw this easy to make, all done using just one pan and comes together in just 30 minutes. Give this pasta dish a try at home. You are gonna absolutely love it. Really quick before I go, a shout out to a couple of my patrons, Michael Cole, Luli Garcia Diaz, Grace Suarez, Amy Martinez, and Yvette Rivera. And guys, thank you so much for being patrons of Spain on a Fork. You know how much I appreciate you. For the rest of you, if you'd like to support the show so I can continue to release videos like this, you'll find my Patreon in the description box below and I card above. If you enjoyed today's video, hit that like button, leave me a comment below, and don't forget to share this video with your family and friends that way our Spain on a Fork community can continue to grow. Till the next time, hasta luego.